Okay, thank you very much, Guillaume, and thanks a lot for the organizers for giving me the opportunity to give uh, this talk today. So I'm going to be talking about uh, entropy accumulation. Um, so it's a, it's a result about uh, properties of entropies of large systems, and uh, uh, it's perhaps a bit technical and a bit difficult to, to digest if you see it at first. So the way I'm going to do this talk is I'm going to try to give you several uh, versions more and more with more and more features of the result hopefully uh, to, to give you a bit of intuition of what what it says on the entropy of large systems okay so uh, and I'm gonna try to focus a bit more on the actual theorem than on the applications which I usually do in such a talk because this is mostly a mathematical audience so uh, let's do that okay so so the let's start with the general objective uh, of this talk, what, what, what we're going to try to do. So we assume we have a large system composed of n subsystems. So think of them as bits or qubits, for example. And our objective is to estimate some kind of operationally relevant entropy of A1 to An. Okay, so the global entropy of, of the system. Okay, and, and uh, this is usually a system that we don't fully control. So uh, what we would like to do is to be able to write this global entropy of these n systems as a function of the entropies of the individual pieces, which are the AIs. Okay? So we would like to find a way of decomposing the entropy of a big system into the entropies of its parts. Okay? So, and we'll see under which conditions this is possible and when this is true. Okay, so to be a bit more concrete, let us take a specific measure of entropy we're interested in, which uh, comes uh, mainly from cryptography. So the setting is as follows. So my objective is to, uh, is to generate random bits. Okay. And uh, so what I have in order to do that is a device that outputs some bits, but that are not perfectly random. They're... Uh, in, yeah, there, it's, it's an imperfect source of randomness, okay? Okay, so like, for example, it could be a quantum device that, uh, that generates some random bits. And my objective is to, as I said, is to extract perfect randomness from, from this imperfect randomness. And the objective is, to, of course, to make this bit string as long as possible, okay? So I would like to extract L bits of perfect randomness or epsilon perfect randomness. Uh, where I would like to maximize this L. Okay, so what property of this uh, imperfect source of randomness um, determines what is the largest L that I can achieve? Okay, so let's try to, to I mean, in this case is relatively simple, so that's why we can even, um, I mean, we can even give a proof of this. So, uh, so think of it this way. So suppose that there is one bit string here that this output, that this device outputs that has probability, let's say, 1 over 4. Okay? Then in this case, what is the largest uh, L bit string you can output by applying a function to this long bit string? Right? You cannot output more than two bits, right? Because every output of this um, procedure, um, there will be one there will be one possible output that will have, that will have probability at least one-fourth, okay? So, and then if you want this to be uniform on bit strings of length L, and if there is one element that appears with probability one-fourth, then uh, it can only have it at most length two, okay? So all this to say that the best you can hope for, for the length or the number of bits of output here, is what is called the min entropy, which is just minus log of the maximum probability of any bit string A. So here A denotes the, the whole bit string. Okay, and there is, there, is a, there is a theorem that says that actually you can find a family of functions here, okay, that you can apply and that basically extracts uh, up to a smaller order terms the min entropy of the source. Okay, so all this to say that uh, the maximum number of bits that I can extract from an imperfect source of randomness is given by this simple quantity, which is basically minus log of the maximum probability. Okay? And uh, so there is a small smoothing parameter here. It doesn't matter what it exactly is. I mean, the, its exact definition doesn't matter, but it comes from the fact that I don't necessarily want um, something that is perfect randomness, but I'm fine with... Um, 
something that is epsilon close to random or epsilon, you can think of it as a small constant. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so now given such a device, what we would like to be able to determine is this quantity because it exactly characterizes the quantity I care about, which is the number of bits of extractable randomness. Okay, so and, and hopefully the objective would be, so this device, it, it generates each one of these bits using some physical procedure, and the objective is to, by understanding the, the, the procedure, in order to generate one of these bits, to be able to say something on the entropy of the whole bit string. Okay. So, uh, okay, yeah, so before, before starting, let's maybe uh, take, uh, take a look at a few examples of, of classical distributions to just uh, convince yourself that, that naive additivity does not hold. Okay, so, uh, so let's uh, consider the following example. So uh, each of the AIs is just a bit, okay? So think of A1 as uniformly random, so it's zero is probability half, one was probability half. Okay, and then the rest is, uh, is, is, is taken as follows. So if A1 is zero, then the rest is completely deterministic. Okay, so it's all zeros. And otherwise, if A1 is equal to one, then the rest is fresh and random. Okay, completely uh, random bits, A2 to AN. Okay, so you see here that uh, the number of, I mean, or, or this min entropy of the bit string A1 to AN is just minus log of a half because the bit string all zeros of length N appears with probability exactly a half. Okay, so the min entropy is exactly one, which is, which is quite small, right? Ideally, we want this min entropy to be linear in N. Okay, and you, so you see here that um, okay, so what if I look at individual systems? So let's, what if I look at a particular bit AI? Okay, what can I say on its mean entropy? Okay, so you see that AI has a simple distribution. It's just uh, with probability three quarters, it's zero, and with probability one quarter, it's one. And so it has a finite mean entropy, namely log four over three. So the sum of the mean entropies is given by something linear in N, so N times some <coughs> positive constant. Okay, so you see that the min entropy of the whole can be much smaller than the sum of the individual entropies in general. Okay, and yeah, so one uh, other thing I wanted to mention here is that you see that this distribution is, is also an example where the min entropy and the Shannon entropy, you might be more familiar with, are very different. So you see the Shannon entropy here is linear in N, whereas the min entropy is, is a constant, is one. Okay. Okay, so we saw that this naive additivity doesn't hold. We cannot just sum the individual mean entropies, and this would give us a result. Okay, but, but the main the statement uh, the, of the main theorem I'll be, sta I'll be stating is the following, is that, is that now if you, instead of computing the contribution of each part by just picking the mean entropy of the marginal, but we'll pick it a bit differently, Right, with some function f that only depends on, on, on the ai part, okay, then this will hold. Okay, I still didn't define what the contribution is, but this will be the objective of this talk. Okay? Okay, that there will be some way of computing the contribution of each part that will, give, that will be such that this formula is true. Okay, so in order to do that, I need to define a general model that um, that generates the, the systems A1 to AN. Okay, how, how A1 to AN is generated. So of course I have freedom in, in choosing this, um, and, but this will usually come up from the physical way that A1 to AN was generated. So if you're analyzing a protocol, for example, this will, uh, these MIs will model the devices that, that gives you these outputs in the protocol. Okay, but let, let me say what it is. So, so think of the, these SIs as some, uh, some kind of the, the internal memory of the, um, of the procedure, of the device, for example. So this is a device that evolves through, through time. It has some internal state, okay, which starts in S0. And at each time step, it outputs uh, the bit AI, and it also um, 
the state evolves, okay, from S0 to S1. Okay, so note that there is always such, it's always, for any joint distribution I take on A1, AN, there's always such a map that I can define. So, for example, one, one of them would be just to say that M1 has no input, and it outputs some system which has the distribution given by the marginal of A1. Okay, and the memory now is exactly the value of, it, of this A1, and uh, M2, what it does is it outputs uh, a sample from A2 conditioned on A1, and its uh, current state becomes the pair A1, A2, etc. And then A3 is generated conditioned on A1, A2, etc. Okay, so given a distribution, there's always such a model that generates this distribution exactly. Okay, so let's see what I want to see next. Yeah, so let's uh, maybe to get used to this, uh, um, to this, model, let's uh, see some examples. So uh, remember the distribution we looked at, this uh, distribution which ha for which the main entropy and the von Neumann entropy are, are or the Shannon entropy are different. Um, uh, it, it behaves as follows. So A1 uh, is uniformly random. This is just to recall what the distribution was. A1 was uniformly random and A2 to AN is either all zeros or random. Okay, so in this case, it's easy to model. So M1 takes no input. It, it generates a random number, okay, 0, 1, and it sets S1, so the internal state, to R, and it outputs A1, which is also equal to this R. Okay, and then uh, now the, the further steps are slightly different. So the state at step I is equal to the state at step I minus 1. Okay, but if the state happens to be zero, then I output always zero, and if the state is one, then I output a fresh random bit. Okay. Okay, so this is one example, and you see it generates exactly the A1, AN as uh, defined. Yeah. Okay, so another important special case is when A1 to AN are IID, okay? independent and identically distributed. So I, yeah, in, in these examples, I'm thinking of, of, the, of the A systems, and actually all the systems are as being classical. Later we'll see what happens in the quantum case. Okay, so yeah, as I said, the second example is, is when we have no memory at all. So imagine the SI systems are all trivial systems. Okay, then what the systems MI are doing Sorry, what the maps MI are doing is just that they're generating a fresh copy of um, AI according to the correct marginal, according to the, to the distribution that, that is fixed here. Okay, so now uh, we're in position to, to uh, define this contribution to the global entropy. Okay, and now this will be a function of the, these maps. Okay, so the, the contribution of AI to the global entropy will be given as a function of the ith map. Okay, so namely it will work as follows. So uh, the contribution of the ith element will be given by not directly the entropy of the marginal, but the worst case entropy of the marginal. If I take uh, the worst case here, so the minimum over all possible internal states S, Okay, of the Shannon entropy for AI. Okay, so uh, at step I here, I look at all possible states here. Again, I'm thinking to simplify the notation, I'm thinking of everything as being classical. So this takes some values, little s. I take the value little s that makes the Shannon entropy of A4 here minimal. Okay, so let's look in these two examples. So you see in these two examples, um, uh, for, for the map M1, it always outputs a random bit. So, okay, so F of, of M1 is equal to one, that's fine. Okay, but you see for the other maps, right, if I pick the state, the internal state being um, equal to one, then the output is deterministic, right? The output, where is this? So the output is deterministic here, so AI is equal to zero, so the entropy is zero as well. Okay, so uh, F of MI here is equal to zero for all um, I bigger than two. Okay, whereas in the IID case here, you see that 
uh, there is no internal state anyway, so this minimization is trivial. So I only have an entropy, I only have to compute an entropy of AI, uh, which is, uh, yeah, so it's just the entropy of the marginal on the I system. Okay, so now I think that the model uh, that I described the model, uh, we can, I can say the first version of the theorem, which is the classical version, everything is classical and there is nothing, we're conditioning on nothing here yet. Okay, so, okay, so what it says is, is what you, I guess you expect by now is um, the following is that it says that this mean entropy, remember the quantity I was interested in, the operationally relevant um, entropy is this smoothed mean entropy, is, uh, it will be lower bounded by the sum of the contributions of each one of the maps. Okay, so again, remember the, the contribution of each map was I take the worst case over internal states of the entropy of the output. Okay, so uh, this is the case, except that I have to, um, I mean, I lose some term which is, uh, uh, which is in, in square root of n. Okay, so the, the constant here actually also depends on epsilon, but I, I, I mean, I omitted this dependence here. Yeah, I didn't put it. I'll put it a bit later. Can I yes, sure. Uh, I mean, the yes, of course. Of yeah, of course, you could take the map which gives you the best bound. Uh, y yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, you could take uh, uh, maps that give you a very bad bound, of course. Uh, for example, even in the IID case, you could say that the map. Uh, uh, stores, for example, uh, the, yeah, I mean, you, of course you could take very, very, uh, but, but as I said, it usually in, in, at least in the applications to cryptography, there is a natural choice for these maps, which is the physical implementation, the way it, the way the AIs are generated. But yeah, that's a good point. Um, Okay, so uh, yeah, so let's look for the two examples. Uh, we see that th this L distribution is this, uh, this uh, distribution which, is a, which was a counter example to this additivity, to this naive additivity. So um, we see here that in this case we had F of M1 equals to, to one and all the rest being equal to zero. So you see that the sum is equal to one. Okay, so the right hand side uh, doesn't give you anything non-trivial. Okay, but this was expected, right? We knew that from this source we cannot extract much. Okay, so the second example uh, is, uh, remember the IID case, uh, which in, in which case we had that the contribution of each part is, ex is just the entropy of the marginal. Okay, in this case we get exactly this statement that if AIs are IID then uh, the mean entropy, the smooth mean entropy, is well approximated by um, the sum of the Shannon or von Neumann entropies up to this square root term. Okay, and this is what is known uh, under the name usually asymptotic equipartition theorem. Maybe usually it's not formulated exactly in this way, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's formulated in, the, in, in a way that says that there exists a, a typical set on which the probabilities are all upper bounded by two to the minus the sum of these entropies, but this is the same. Okay. Um, okay, so again, I said I, I wouldn't talk too much about applications, but maybe uh, I will uh, say uh, a bit vaguely how, how this is applied in general to, to cryptography. Okay, so let's uh, go back to our randomness extraction example. Remember, I have this uh, uh, imperfect randomness source, and I would like to estimate how much uh, uh, randomness there is. Okay, so uh, the way we will model it is that, so each bit here is generated, uh, each bit AI is generated in some way, okay, using some map, MI, Okay, and th this is the internal state of the device, S minus, minus one and SI. 
Okay, so the way, yeah, as I said, the, the way we'll, we'll model uh, in, in general, when we, ha when we have a general uh, cryptographic protocol, these MIs will play the role of the ith step of the protocol. For example, here, it will be the, uh, the map that generated the ith bit, okay? But it will, in general, include the attack of the adversary. Again, here, I'm not specifying uh, specifically what the, what the adversary is allowed to do, but... Uh, we may assume that he can affect this device in some way, and this should be included in the way you define the map MI. Okay, so SI minus one, SI is the internal memory of the device, and AI is the uh, randomness bit that is generated at step I. Okay, and again, I'm just restating uh, what the entropy accumulation result says, is that uh, yeah, so the min entropy of the whole system is lower bounded by a sum of the contribution of each part. And you can really interpret these terms as follows in cryptographic terms. So A1 to AN, so the min entropy of A1 to AN, you can see this as the best way the adversary has for guessing the bits A1 to AN jointly. So he can do anything arbitrary in order to guess the bits A1 to AN. Okay, and this gives, you, gives him the best guessing probability. And the right-hand side, you can interpret it as, uh, in a slightly different way here, uh, I mean, quantified in a slightly different way, as the best local attack for step i, right? So, um, so if, if you think that the, that the adversary can control the internal state s, then uh, what f of m i is saying is, is you take the worst case over all possible internal states of the Shannon entropy of the ith output. Okay. okay, so yeah, you can think of this result in this way as basically reducing studying the best general attack into a best local attack in this sense. Okay, so now uh, I will try to, to move on to, to the... As I, so, so this was the first statement of the, of the result. Now I will try to advertise the, another, I think, important property of the, of the result we can prove is, is the following. Right, so in general, when you, when you want to analyze a, a cryptographic protocol, um, you, uh, I mean, you, 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 there are some statistics that you observe on the running of the device, okay? So you can, uh, so if you think, for example, of, of, uh, uh, of quantum key distributions or things like this, you, you, um, um, you have a step where you, where, you, where you check that there was no eavesdropping, okay? And, and uh, this, is the, this is what I call statistics in general, that you observe, uh, in some sense, how the device behaved, okay? So this is the property I'd like to include now. Okay, so, um, so here is how I will model it. So remember we have, again, it's here, it's completely classical. Um, so, uh, these, now remember, these was the, the SIs were the internal states of, of the device, and it outputs AI at step I, but it also outputs something extra, which is these WIs. Okay, so these WIs, you should think of it as some statistics that you can observe on the running of the device. Okay, so for example, if you think of these as, as uh, perhaps the easiest is, is if you think of these as, uh, uh, for example, playing uh, uh, some game like CHSH or something, then WI could be whether in the ith round you successfully played the game or not. Okay, WI is equal to zero if, if, you, if you lost the game, and WI is equal to one if you won the game. Okay, so, um, yeah, in this case, you would want a statement that depends on these observed statistics, and here is, here is how this is, this, this is going to enter. Okay, so we're going to fix some distribution on the possible values of WI, so think of it as win or lose for now. Okay, so, um, uh, so yeah, so think of Q as a distribution over 0, 1, for example. Okay, so yeah, for 0, 1, you can think of Q as just a number, let's say the probability of 1, okay? And in this case, the statement we'll be able to make is not on uh, just 
the main entropy of A1n, but it will be on the main entropy of A1n conditioned on seeing an empirical distribution for W1 to n equal to Q, okay? So, uh, I don't know, imagine Q is 80%, for example, so then this will be the mean entropy of the systems A1 to n, we'll also count uh, the systems W1 to n for a technical reason, um, but now you condition on the fact that the number of, of rounds that are one is exactly 80%. Okay. Um, so in this case you get a similar statement except that now in this, uh, remember F of MI was the contribution of the ith, um, the ith uh, output in, to my global entropy, it will be minimized over a smaller set. Okay, so instead of, remember, before I was minimizing over all possible internal states uh, here, now I will only minimize over all possible internal states that lead, that lead to a WI that is given exactly by this Q. Okay, so what this means again is that, uh, so suppose, take a, let's take again the case where Q is, uh, is 80%. So uh, wh what I'm saying is that instead of optimizing over, instead of minimizing over the entropy uh, of the output of this box over all possible uh, internal states here, then I will only take, uh, I will only minimize over the, the internal states such that the distribution of the, uh, of the, of the W is exactly 80% winning and, and uh, the rest of losing. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is, in general is a, is a useful property. For example, you see that uh, yeah, in particular in the case where um, uh, this is like winning the CHSH game, you want to be able to, to say what is the minimum entropy provided that I win the game with some probability. Okay, so, but again, I, I won't get into much detail about this. Um, Okay, so maybe here I can take the opportunity to, to say a bit more on, on, what, uh, on what this constant is. So this constant uh, has a dependence on, on this epsilon, right, but uh, mild dependence. It also has a dependence on, on uh, the distribution here you take on win-lose. Uh, okay, this is also necessary, right? If you take a Q that is very unlikely, of course you... Um, you don't expect to be able to say much. Okay. Ah, yes, yes, of course. I mean, that's why, yeah. So, I mean, the non-negligible here is, is uh, yeah, before saying, the, I mean, it's exactly to take into account this term, yes. Uh, yes. Um, okay, and it also depends on the local dimensions. But, of, uh, I mean, if AIs are, are bits, then uh, this is just one. Okay, there is another term also. It's a dependence in how much this function, f, um, changes. Okay, so it depends on the gradient. Again, yeah, I, I won't uh, get too much into the technical details of this, but this is also necessary in some way. Okay, but you see all this is in the second order term, right? We think of this as, as a term that is linear in n, and this term is, is uh, in square root n. Even though in practice this constant is actually important, but uh, yeah, so it's important to get good bounds here, but I mean, I won't talk about this in this talk. Okay, so now for the, uh, for the next step we want now, the systems SI to be quantum, right? So this internal memory should be quantum. And there's also an additional thing we want to, we want to be able to do is that these devices at each step, we want to allow it to output some, um, some uh, classical register, BI, that the adversary can see as well, BI. Okay? And this, this we hadn't, uh, we didn't have so far. Um, okay, so let's uh, maybe say a word on, on quantum systems. Uh, so now I see, so yeah, so the, the systems SI are now, are now quantum, but uh, I mean, yeah, because we're, we're in a quantum case, so I, I can't just 
condition on a specific value, I need to take into account explicitly uh, the fact that the, the adversary keeps some memory with him. Okay, so this is E. And uh, it's fine to think of, a, of the systems AI and BI as classical. Okay, this is, I mean, you can do a bit more generally, but uh, not much more. Okay, and remember the WI is the statistics I observe, and we will assume that it's a deterministic function of AI and, and BI. Okay, so given AI and BI, I can determine whether I won or lost. Okay, so I mean, if, you th if you're thinking of, uh, of uh, playing CHSH sequentially, then think of BIs as the inputs and the AIs as the outputs of the game. Okay. Yeah, actually you can think, I mean, in, in, uh, in the talk right before this one, uh, I mean, we also had a um, uh, specific, um, I mean, a setting of this form, right? Remember we had the system which was, I mean, the equivalent of the system is, is these S's, and there was a map that was applied and you get an outcome at each step. This is the result of the measurement, A1 to A2 to AN, right? But so the point of view, I think, was slightly different in that what, what uh, you wanted is, is uh, uh, to, to say limiting properties on this AN. Whereas here, what we would want is to say some, and also on the, on the, on the actual state, right? So the, the marginal on SN. Here, our objective is more to study the, how entropy accumulates across A1 to AN, okay? Uh, but it's probably related. I don't understand exactly the, the connections, but yeah. I think it's uh, interesting. Okay, so yeah, so this is the quantum setting. Again, uh, the min entropy is defined, uh, you can think of it as defined as uh, minus log of the guessing probability. So if I have B1, if I have access to B1n and E, then what is the best probability of correctly guessing A1n? Okay. And this, uh, still in the same way, it quantifies the amount of extractable randomness with respect to uh, the system. Okay, so now I can state uh, the result for the quantum case. It again has a similar form. Okay, so now this is the way I generate the, um, the bits A1 or, or the systems A1 to AN. I'm generated it in this way. And um, yeah, so, so here's the statement. So now I look at the mean entropy of A1n conditioned on B1n and E. So remember these Bi's, they, they should model something that the adversary has access to. <coughs> right, so again, I, we incorporate here the, the observed statistic part. So I can condition on the frequency of winning, for example, on the number of, of times I won equals to a specific Q. And this is again lower bounded by some linear term, so N times, uh, yeah, I'm not sure why I, I, I put, okay, fine. So this is lower bounded by N times the minimum over I of the contribution of the, of the ith map. I mean, this could be a sum as well. I don't remember why I, I removed this, maybe to, to emphasize that something linear in N here. Um, okay, and, and uh, this, uh, this function here, f, is defined again in a similar way, but now where, we are, where, where we're allowing quantum systems, right? So remember the function f was taking the worst case over all possible internal states. Okay, so now I do the same, right? But I, same thing, so I cannot condition on a specific value of, of s, so, so I have to take uh, the minimum over all possible joint states on S i minus one and E, okay? Again, we have this observed statistic part, so, but I, I can only, I, I, I may optimize only over the, the input such that the output when I look at W i is exactly equal to Q. Okay, so uh, think of it as the winning probability being exactly equal to Q. Okay, and I look at the um, von Neumann entropy of A i condition B i and E. Okay so, okay, so this doesn't quite hold exactly, so we need an extra condition, and this is actually needed. 
So you see here what, what could happen, wh why something extra is needed. What could happen is that, so uh, imagine the SI has in its memory all the previous AIs, all the previous output bits. Okay, this could be the case. It's not ruled out. So for example, SN minus one contains already A1 to AN minus one. Okay, so it could be that this map, um, even though uh, the entropy of AN conditioned on BNE is, very, is large, is, is one or something, okay? It could be that for every possible input state, this entropy is large, but it could be that uh, what the map is doing is it's putting in BN all the previous A1 to AN minus one, okay? But in this case, definitely the mean entropy of uh, A1N conditioned on, in particular, BN would not be large. Right, so we, we want to have a condition that prevents from putting into BN the previous AIs, okay? And so this is what exactly this condition is doing. Uh, it's, it's forcing the I plus one's term B to be independent of A1 to, to I if I condition on B1, I, and E, okay? So uh, yeah, in applications in general, actually BI is, is uh, fresh and random. So uh, this is uh, clearly satisfied. But uh, yeah, so this more general condition um, is sufficient for this to hold. Okay. Okay, so maybe in the remaining time, which is not much, I can try to give a sketch of the proof. So. Okay, so maybe what I'll try to do, I'll, I'll choose, I'll, I'll just uh, do uh, an overall sketch of how, what are the steps of the proof. And uh, what I wanted to do is try to focus on two points. Maybe I'll try to focus on just one point and then conclude. Okay, so I'll take the, just even to simplify notation, I'll take the simplest version where everything is classical. So A1 to N is classical. And we have no side information and we have no statistics, okay? So um, again, remember, recall that the objective looks like this. And the general way of proving this is similar to uh, the way the asymptotic equipartition is proved, in particular in this paper. And it's to use these intermediate quantity, which you can think of them as interpolating between the von Neumann entropy and the mean entropy, <coughs> which are these alpha entropies. Okay, so, so um, uh, you can think of, of it as, of the proof as having basically four steps. So the first step is to relate the main entropy to the alpha Reni entropy, okay? So this is very generic. This works always for, for any uh, possible, for any distribution, there is a link between the smooth main entropy and the alpha entropy, okay? This is a relatively standard step. So the next step is to decompose here, and maybe this is the crucial step, is to decompose this alpha entropy for, uh, for the systems from one to n into the alpha entropies of the individual systems. Okay, so if you think of alpha is equal to one here, then uh, this is just the chain rule, right? The usual chain rule. So you, ha you would have even the same state. But uh, in this case, because they're alpha entropies, the chain rule does not hold. Um, but uh, what we prove is uh, in the step two, what I will show in the next slide, is that it does hold provided you change a little bit the state. New I. Okay. So I will present it in the next slide. So this is the general framework and I say so you have to replace rho by new i and I will, yeah, I will, I will say a bit more on, on the chain rule in the next slide. But so, okay, so this is the general, so you now, you, you decompose A1n into the, these AIs, okay? And then remember what you want, your objective at the end is to get something on the von Neumann entropy, H. Okay, so the next step is to use the fact that if alpha is close to one, then H and H alpha are not too far. Okay, so uh, you use this, okay, H alpha is uh, greater than H of AIB. Okay, this is the step you get here. Note there's something uh, like an uh, important comment maybe is, is you could not do this uh, here, 
right, before decomposing. If you do this before decomposing, you will get nothing because the dependence, the dependence in, the, in the dimension is, is, is quadratic in, in the log. Okay, so if you do it here, you will get nothing, but if you do it after decomposing, you can get something here. And, uh, okay, and in the last step here, I mean, we could have done it before, but um, we will optimize over alpha and we'll also use a specific property of new i. Till now, I didn't tell you what new i is. Okay, if, if it was completely arbitrary, then this would be completely useless. But uh, here, it, it inherits some of the properties of rho. Uh, namely, uh, we'll, we'll see that new i is, um, you can see it as, as applying the map m i to some internal state s. Okay, or at least you can bound it in this way. Okay, and this basically is, is, is it for the sketch of the proof. Maybe I can say, I can take one minute to, 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 uh, to say a word on, on what the chain rule is. So here's the definition of the Renyi entropy. Maybe I won't uh, discuss it too much. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe, so in the quantum case, uh, there are several generalizations of Renyi entropies, but here for this chain rule, it's, it's actually very important to use a specific one, which is the sandwich Renyi entropy. Okay, where, uh, yeah, so this is the definition. And uh, as I said, so the chain rule uh, takes this form. So again, if you think of it as alpha equals to one, it's the usual chain rule. But for, for, alpha, for alpha different from one, uh, you, I mean, it has the, the, the same form, except that this last term here, instead of having the same state rho, what it has is the state nu. Okay, so the important property of nu is as follows is that it is obtained by taking some new on A1, A1 and B and generating A2 in the same way that rho generated A2 condition on A1B. Okay, so think of them as, as, think of the systems as classical. Maybe it's easier for intuition is that, so the way new A1, A2B uh, behaves is that you take some distribution which is Think of it as arbitrary even, it doesn't matter. So new A1B is arbitrary, but then the way you get A2 from A1B is not arbitrary at all, it's exactly the same as in rho, okay? And this is what allows us to, to show uh, this, right? Uh, you see it's exactly in the same spirit, that A2 is generated in the same way as rho. So rho was generated using this map, Mi, so um, new is, is in the same way generated, okay? So this is basically the chain rule. Okay, I wanted to discuss uh, how to take the observed statistics into account, but I'll, I'll skip that. And I'll just conclude. Uh, yeah, so the main message of, of, of this talk is that um, in, in some uh, rather generic settings, you can compute the total entropy as the sum of the entropy contribution of each part provided that the entropy of the parts is, is, is computed in the right way. So namely by taking uh, this, this worst case over all possible internal states. Okay, and so, um, I mean, I guess this originates, I mean, the motivation for this came from cryptography and, and um, it basically, it, it's in the same spirit as these works on definite reductions and post-selection technique um, in, in the sense that we are reducing a general attack to a local attack to one, to, of one step of the protocol um, but the advantage here is that uh, there are less assumptions. You don't need these symmetry assumptions that are usually needed. And you also get better bounds. Okay, so in particular, this was used uh, here in this paper to obtain tight analysis for device-independent quantum key distribution. Okay, of course, this comes at the cost. It's that, so here, I mean, in the entropy accumulation theorem, you can only say something on the entropies. Whereas in definite reductions, you can, say something on the actual state, right? So here we can only say something on the entropies, but at least for cryptographic applications, this is usually the only thing you need. Okay, I can mention that there is a, there is a corresponding upper bound for the, think of it as the ma best case entropy, if you want, the max entropy, uh, where you, you, ha you have to just change uh, the inequalities. Okay, and in general, I wanted to say that, uh, I mean, this is, you can think of it as a general framework that if you have a chain rule uh, similar to, to this one, but uh, perhaps slightly different, uh, where instead of this uh, new, you, you have some other properties, 
then you, you would get an entropy accumulation result. Okay, so for example, one, one uh, um, perhaps I can mention one open problem, which would be to show uh, a result of this form for uh, relative entropy quantities. So you imagine that you have now two distributions. They're evolving using two different uh, maps. Okay, can you say a statement of, of, the, of the same form by saying that the relative entropy between the two uh, distributions on A1AN is given by, is lower bounded by the sum of the worst case relative entropy at each step. Okay? Okay, and I'll stop here. Sorry for taking over time. Yeah.